Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, I'm from wikibon.org, and this is Silicon Angle's The Cube, where we bring you the smartest people that we can find, we extract the signal from the noise. We're here at O'Reilly Media Strata Conference, it's day two for us. This is the, I guess the fourth time we've done Strata, maybe the fifth, but this is the third Strata in Santa Clara. We've been at all three, and one of the first Stratas we ever did uh, was an amazing event, Silicon Angles, Cube got huge, huge traffic. You were all very, very interested in this event. Big Data was just coming in to the, to the, the discussion in that parlance. And Joseph Turian was one of our original guests uh, at that event. And um, Joseph is a, a PhD, data scientist, machine learning expert, AI expert. Uh, uh, entrepreneur, and probably you know, 100 other things that uh, <laughs> we'll find out in this interview. But Joseph, first of all, welcome back to theCUBE. Oh, it's nice to see you again, thank you. Yeah, so you yeah, got a lot going on, as I described. Yeah. Um, you were talking off camera, you got some new project that you're very excited about, I want to hear about yeah. that. But um, tell me, you know, what's new in the world, in your world, what you're seeing that's interesting, challenging, and things that are attracting your attention? Sure. So I mean, actually, the, la the last time I, I spoke with you, we were talking about um, deep learning, which was this wacky new thing in machine learning. It was kind of an academic thing. But now we've actually seen this year that, that it's ready for prime time. We're seeing deep learning being used in industry, right? Google came out, they had a, they had a very public paper where they actually watched YouTube videos using deep learning and it started just picking out cats without being trained on anything. That, that was kind of a fun paper, right? But more interestingly, they're using deep learning in speech recognition in Google Now. They're trying to put deep learning into a lot of their products as far as, as, far as they, they've told us. Uh, Microsoft is also using deep learning stuff. They had a demo where they showed uh, uh, an, uh, uh, someone speaking and it took his speech, translated it into Chinese, and then spoke it as if he were speaking Chinese. And they're using deep learning for this. So a lot of the stuff in machine learning that, that academics have been working on is now actually, we're seeing it in, in production in an exciting way for things like visual recognition, speech recognition, translation, all the stuff people have been talking about for AI for a while and wanted, we're actually starting to see. And they, I, I also believe they might be using it for their self-driving cars. So this is something that's, I think, an interesting So problem. really uh, challenging problems that are starting to, f to, to find their way into potentially commercial applications yeah. with much greater degrees of, of accuracy and utility yeah. than we've seen in the past. Yeah, and, and I mean, that was the thing that was really exciting about deep learning was this idea that it was ambitious, but also very rigorous. So the, the, it wasn't just a lot of hype, it wasn't just a lot of talk about, oh, we can do it like this and this looks like the brain. No, these techniques actually work and we can put them into use. And that's what's really exciting, is seeing these ambitious projects like self-driving cars and speech recognition and translation really actually perhaps in our hands pretty soon. So Joseph, I mean, artificial intelligence obviously an yeah. area that, that you know a lot about. It's been around for a long, long time. Yeah. It's had a, it's gone through cycles of yeah. bad raps and yeah. obviously making its way back. What has been the, the enabler? I mean, obviously data is one yeah. of those enablers, but what are the things that have catapulted uh, deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence up back to sort of prominence and, and great potential? Yeah, and, you, and you're right that we've been burned several times by hype around artificial intelligence. And people have been very leery of even the term artificial intelligence. If you were a serious scientist, you would not say artificial intelligence because you, you'd be, like, people would be, no, 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 you must be a kook, you know? So, so first of all, like, the, there's, there's this leeriness of artificial intelligence. But you've but embraced it, that's yeah. what I love No, about I you. mean, it, it, it's finally, it's finally yeah. getting to the point now that you, we can start saying again, it's not a dirty word. Mm -hmm. But serious scientists, you know, for a while being burned and saying, you know what, first there, were the, there was this camp it was very popular in the 90s. They said, we're only going to work on problems that we really understand what's going on. 
And then a, a, a sort of a, a faction of people say, you know what, we actually want to, we want to really push the envelope. We're going to try some new stuff. It doesn't matter if we don't exactly understand what's going on, because if it works and we can demonstrate empirically that it works, then that's, in, that's exciting in itself. So these guys who made this decision, we're going to work on things, even if we don't completely understand why it works, if it's effective and rigorous, then we will still study it. So it was kind of a change in thought. The, 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 it was one of the things that led to this, these advances, um, a sort of new sort of ambitiousness while at the same time staying grounded and realistic, you know? So you talked about some examples that you know, Google and Microsoft yep. are doing with, uh, with, with video in particular, which yep. has been a, a really <clears throat> challenging problem. What other applications do you see that have you know, great potential uh, that, uh, that are exciting you? Well, so um, I know uh, if, if you follow Kaggle, Kaggle did a competition uh, for Merck on drug discovery. And the people that won the drug discovery competition, if I recall correctly, they used deep learning. So all the things right now that people are doing machine learning for, whether it's financial modeling or medical applications, all these things, if you're, if you're already using machine learning, perhaps we can use deep learning and push the envelope even further. That's the idea. You know, I asked you um, a couple years ago about Watson. You know, yeah. Watson was just coming out, yeah. and you were like, mm, not too <laughs> excited about it, uh, right? Uh, okay, so. Okay, but, yeah. but so, uh, but of course at the time, it was new and, yeah. you know, the great demos. I yeah. mean, like, like, you know, supercomputers playing chess at yeah. the time were pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but from a scientist perspective, it was like, okay, you know, that's, that's nice, but it yeah. was, I think you, you in my words, you describe it more of a sort of a brute force approach. Yeah. Um, so, can machine learning, you know, provide a more <laughs> elegant or efficient or more powerful model than, yeah. say, for example, what we've seen with, with Watson, even though it gets a lot of buzz and a lot of attention? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, Watson, Watson actually is a pretty good case study because, you know, the world is a messy place. And if you, if you want to build something real, there's going to be a lot of different parts that you have to glue together. You know, and Watson is kind of a Frankenstein, and it's not that elegant, but it does work, you know, and right. there's, that's actually, that's actually kind of great. So, I mean, machine learning in the real world is probably going to be a piece of the puzzle, and this puzzle's going to be pretty big. Okay, so it doesn't you know? have to be all shiny and polished and pretty. I mean, that's not how anything in the real <laughs> world is, right? So you were telling me about this new project, um, without giving me any details, yeah. but uh, what can you tell me about it? Um, I can't talk about it right now, but it will help you, it will help everyone understand their data in a much more easy and accessible way. That's it. Uh, here, let me tell you what, what I think is cool right now, okay? This is something different. Yeah, okay. Um, it's, um, so I'm really interested in right now in how, you know, Mark Andreessen says software is eating the world. And we see, we're seeing, I think, really cool examples of this. There's collaborative consumption, things like Uber and Lyft and Sidecar, where people are really solving problems in the real world and logistics using software. I think that's one thing that's really exciting. And then coming at it from another direction is this whole internet of things where there are sensors everywhere. And, uh, and sort of in the middle is also like Google Glass, right? Which is like an embodiment of software that we can interact with. So I think that's, that's the other trend that I think is really exciting right now is just uh, software helping us in our physical reality and becoming much more pervasive physically. So this notion of wearable devices, yeah. or it, was, it was really quite interesting, yeah. particularly from the user experience yeah. standpoint. I mean, it, it completely changes the, I don't even want to call it an interface, yeah. so I'm not sure it's an interface anymore. Yeah, wearable <laughs> devices. And then, but then there's also stuff like, you know, um, I think Uber and Lyft and Sidecar, I think this is very exciting, right? And then there are these new services like uh, eBay Now. You press the button on your phone and in two or three hours they get you what you wanted, right? Or Postmates, they're doing the same thing. It's just errands on demand, exec is on demand, right? Uh, this idea of just um, every, every single thing that might be physical being optimized and made much more efficient using software, I think is a really exciting So thing. what's most interesting about that yeah. from a consumer standpoint is it simplifies things. Yeah. Um, Hadoop is still really hard, right? I mean, the number of people that can actually do something with it are, yeah. is quite limited. Yeah. Um, so, will those two <laughs> worlds meet? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, eventually they will, how quickly they will. I don't know. Is that something that you'd like to try to accelerate? I mean, is that, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell us anything about what you're doing, but is it, a, is it around sort of simplifying the complex? Is that? 
a fair so, bet? I mean, so, you know, I, I think that accessibility is where everything is moving. And accessibility and simpler interfaces is, is the real theme that I think we're getting at, right? Because Google Glass is just a much better interface than playing around with your thumbs, right? Using your voice is a much more accessible interface. Um, pressing a button on your phone is much simpler than going outside and hailing a cab. So I think the move is more towards accessibility and towards naturalness of interaction. That, so, I guess that's the thing. So watch, you know, we we're talking about Apple doing a, you know, <laughs> a new wrist device, like yeah, Dick maybe. Tracy or Yeah, I mean, 007. I don't know. I think, talk, I think just speaking, speaking your voice and not having to even lift up a device is even easier. But th it seems like there's this push towards just everything becoming more accessible. You know, and I think that's exciting. How about, you know, you mentioned the Internet of Things. Yeah. Um, and I think, of, I think of the security problems around that. I think of what Intel announced this week and mm -hmm. how they're trying to attack that problem. I think of Stuxnet. Mm -hmm. I read earlier this week that it actually was developed probably around 2005, <laughs> um, which doesn't surprise me, but yeah. you know, it's, it, the most conventional wisdom we found out about it in 2010, I think. So what are your thoughts on, on how that whole Internet of Things will emerge, how the security you know, model will have to change, um, and the simplicity model, the interface uh, uh, to those devices. Oh, I mean, security is like a huge question. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't even know if we, we can get into that, right? That's, <laughs> like, that's like, I mean, that's like yeah. talking about like, what's going to happen with privacy in, in 10 years? Like, this is such a huge question. Well, let me ask you. And it could go so many ways, Let me right? be more specific. Do you, yeah. do, you, do you think that security is a complete do-over? <laughs> in order to uh, be able to accommodate that type of infrastructure? I don't know. I, that's a really hard, <laughs> it's, just, it's just an impossible question to ask, you know? I, 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 I'm going to have to give you a no comment on that one. No comment, all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, fair enough. What else do you want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. Um, so I have a startup idea for anyone that wants to do a startup. Oh yeah. All right, so here's a good startup idea. So we were talking about um, collaborative consumption. Here's the idea. A lot of people have stuff in their apartment that they don't need and they want to get rid of, okay? But they don't want to go on Craigslist and sell it because that's a pain, okay? Other people need stuff, but they only need it temporarily. So the idea is um, Uber meets consignment, okay? You, they, it's, or Uber meets storage. We come, we get your stuff, we take it away. If we can sell it, then we will. Otherwise, we store it and you pay us a month on a monthly basis and compress the body and get it back when you need it, right? Because people have talked about like, oh, would it, would it be great if I had a co-op where I could share hardware, like for home repairs and stuff like that. But it's even, what I'm proposing is even easier. You buy the hammer, then when you're done with it, you give it back, and if we can sell it to the next guy, then you finally cash out. That's the <laughs> idea. If you, want to, if you want to do something cool, I want this application right now. There's too much stuff in my apartment, and I want to sell it, but I don't have the time. It's a kind of a uh, modern, modern version of an auction house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's, it it's Uber online. meets an auction house. You yeah, know? <laughs> that's good. All right, Joseph. Well, listen, I really appreciate you sharing some ideas, uh, yeah. respecting you, uh, not wanting to talk about security because it's such a hairball. It's, uh, it's a can of worms. And, uh, ball of worms, ball of wax. And uh, I, Joseph says no comment on security being a do-over. I actually think it, it, it pretty much is a do-over, but uh, we'll see. You might be right, um, yeah. And uh, I hope so because every year I look back and say it's further and further away from actually succeeding, but uh, yeah. it's a hard problem. Uh, but at any rate, it's gr uh, always great to have you on. Yeah. We'll be tracking. Please keep in touch, let us know. Um, what's the timing for when you can actually talk about your uh, new venture? Is it when it's ready. Within, within the next year, within the next Definitely two Definitely within the next decade. Within the next decade? Yeah, oh, within the okay. next decade. Good, so that, yeah. that's, a, that's a long runway for innovation, so yeah. we, it may morph Hey, change completely. of the world is hard business. <laughs> <you know? laughs> right. yeah. Joseph, great to All see right. you, man. Great to Thanks see you, Thanks very much. All right, me. keep it right there, and we'll be right back with the show wrap-up here live from the StratiConf in Santa Clara, California. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon. This is theCUBE.